So what comes to mind when you think of supercomputers? Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. So these are state-of-the-art quantum processors. A supercomputer, as the name suggests, is a jacked-up version of a personal computer used for tasks deemed too complicated for a normal PC to handle. Think quantum mechanics, weather forecasting, climate research, oil and gas exploration, molecular modeling, space exploration, tracing missile trajectories, detonation of nuclear weapons, and so on. Now remember the scientific breakthrough of getting the actual photo of the supermassive black hole? It wouldn't have been possible without a computational power of a specialized supercomputer. Now while a personal computer works on a single processor, a supercomputer uses multiple processors at the same time. Think hundreds or maybe thousands of computers joining forces to compute parallelly. Take the latest Intel Core i9 Extreme Edition processor designed for desktop computers. It has 18 cores and is capable of 1 trillion floating operations per second. That is as fast as a supercomputer from 1998. Modern supercomputers also use similar chips. Just instead of a few chips, they use a tens of thousands of chips at the same time. In short, what distinguishes a supercomputer is basically its scale. Today's fastest supercomputer, Summit, uses 36,000 onboard processors and can perform 200 quadrillion calculations per second. What a normal computer will do in 30 years, the Summit can do in one hour. But the Summit is no lightweight. It takes up as much space as two full basketball courts and uses 200 miles of cable. Its cooling system uses 4,000 gallons of water per minute and consumes enough power to run 8,000 homes. Supercomputing in India started late in the 1980s after the US denied imports of its supercomputers to India due to an arms embargo. In fact, the Center for Development of Advanced Computing, the CDAC, was established for achieving self-sufficiency in the field of supercomputing. The first Indian supercomputer was the Param 8000, unveiled in 1991 by the CDAC under Dr. Vijay Bhatka's leadership. It had 64 CPUs. In 2015, India launched the National Supercomputing Mission with an aim to install 70 supercomputers across the country. It is a 4,500 100 crore rupees seven year long program. However, only 10% of its total budget was released till 2018. Even experts have said that limited funding is the biggest crutch for the technology in India. The Ministry of Earth Sciences, however, has announced a 1500 crore rupees investment on two supercomputers, which will take the total number of supercomputers in India to 13. Now, currently, India possesses only 11 supercomputers. This figure is dwarfed by China's 220 and the US's 116. The China-US race to become a supercomputing superpower is fueled by billions of dollars worth of investment towards infrastructure and human resource. While India has about 280,000 people working in supercomputing, China has roughly 1.7 million people and the US employs 1.3 million people in supercomputing. From its 2007 number of 13 supercomputers, China now has 220. Its unwavering focus on supercomputing that started as early as 2002 has enabled it to envision and enforce an AI-enabled future powering massive surveillance operation and countrywide resource management programs. All of China's supercomputer also feature in this year's top 500 list of supercomputers of the world. India, despite being in the supercomputer race for three decades, can boast of only three supercomputers in the list. In a vast country like India, with a rapidly growing online population, supercomputing holds the key to resolve several of the country's persistent problems. From weather and climate mapping to aid the majority of population engaged in agriculture to backing its ambition to install pan-India facial recognition systems, supercomputing is the way forward for India. It will help foster research in medicine, gene editing, and even space exploration. Given that data is the new oil, India would do very well to wake up to the challenge of developing its indigenous supercomputers that can reduce its dependency on imports and give it a foothold against US and China, and ultimately help turn its supercomputing superflop into a petaflop.